Hello everyone. Yes, actually, and uh, na record ko to karugtong no, avoidable and an enforceable contracts one set up lang. So, an minamadali na rin talaga kasi nga yes, most of you I understand tapos nang mag final exam and so marami talaga nagme-message na sana matapos bago sila mag final exam since nagka time today. Okay? Tatapusin natin lahat although Yung target ko is hanggang dito lang talaga sa discussion ng void contracts, okay? Well, wag na nating patagalin pa. Let's begin with void contracts. Now, bago natin i-discuss si 1409, uh, gusto ko lang din i- yeah, i-distinguish si void contracts from voidable contracts and unenforceable contracts. Now, eto muna. Voidable tsaka void contracts. Si voidable contracts, pwede siyang maratify. Si void, hindi talaga pwede kasi nga void and un inexistent talaga yan. Now, second, etong si voidable produces effects until annulled, di ba? Valid until annulled. Pero si void, Generally, effects are wala talaga. It produces no effects at all. Okay? Si voidable, yun nga, valid until annulled. Pag void, void from the very beginning na talaga siya. So, no action is required to set it aside. Kay, void, kay voidable, kailangan mo i-annulled para ma-set aside. Eto, hindi na talaga kailangan ng action. Unless, na-performed na siya. Okay? So, doon magkakaroon ng action kasi na-perform na yung supposedly is void contracts nga. Now, another, si voidable contracts, it may be cured by prescription, di ba? After 4 years, pag hindi nag-file ng annulment yung injured party or yung incapacitated party, mawawala, mag-prescribe na. And so, hindi na natin ma-attack yung voidable contracts. Then, kay void, hindi siya makukured by prescription. Kasi nga, void talaga siya. Kahit ilang taon pa ang lumipas, void talaga siya. Okay? Then, another, sa defense naman. Yung defense ng voidable contract, ang makakapag-invoke lang dito is yung mga parties. Okay? Yung principally or subsidiarily liable. Pati rin syempre yung kaniyang mga successors in interest. Now, kay void contracts, defense may be availed of by anybody. Whether he is a party to the contract or not. As long as his, I mean, his interest is directly affected. And lastly, it was voidable. It is referred to as a relative or conditional nullity. Now, pag si void, minsan inerefer din siya as absolute nullity. Okay, so yun yung difference ni void from voidable contracts. Now, let's distinguish this from ano rin, unenforceable contracts. Si unenforceable contracts, pwedeng maratify nga. Si void, hindi pwedeng maratify. Si unenforceable contract, there is a contract but it cannot be enforced by court action. Si void, no contract at all. Okay? Yun yung ano sa kanya, void and inexistent contract talaga siya. And third, ano, difference nila is, si unenforceable contracts, it cannot be assailed by third parties. Kay void, yun nga sabi ko kanina, it can be assailed by anybody directly affected. So, let's start with Article 1409. The following contracts are in existence and void from the beginning. Number one, well, actually, etong Article 1409 is the enumeration of void contracts. Rin, okay? It enumerates the various kinds of void contracts. Now, Unang una is yun daw, ob cause, object, or purpose is contrary to law, morals, good customs, public order, or public policy. Second, yun daw, uh, absolutely simulated or fictitious. 
Third, those whose costs or object did not exist at the time of the transaction. Fourth, those whose object is outside the commerce of men. Fifth, those who, which contemplates an impossible service. Sixth, those where the intention of the parties relative to the principal object of the contract cannot be ascertained. And seventh, those expressly prohibited or declared void by law. So, hindi siya exclusive. Unlike dun kay unenforceable contracts, dun kay statute of frauds, na yung enumeration dun ay exclusive. Yun lang talaga. Anyway, balik tayo kay void contracts. So, si void contracts has actually special classification, di ba? There are two kinds of void contracts. Dung binasa natin yung enumerations niya. First, meron tayo yung mga inexistent contracts talaga, di ba? Na kung saan yung formalities required by law are not met. So, contract has no or, yeah, no effect at all. Yung second classification or kinds ng void contracts are yun namang mga illegal or illicit one. So, dalawang klase talaga ng void contracts. Yung inexistent talaga and second is yung illegal na mga kontrata. Kaya naging void. So, let's discuss rin what are the characteristics of a void contract. First, yung defense of illegality cannot be waived. Hindi mo pwedeng ma-waived. Siyempre kasi nga illegal siya. Then second, they are not subject to ratification. Third, the action to declare the contract in existence does not prescribe. Fourth, generally no action to declare them void is needed. Okay? Hindi na kailangan i-declare pa na void siya. Wala na kailangan ganun. And fifth, the defense of illegality of contracts is not available to third persons whose interests are not directly affected. Anyway, parang ang gulo na ng discussion ko. Anyway, balikan nga natin si 1409. Baka akalain nyo hindi ko i-discuss siya. First, yung number one, parang hindi na kailangang i-discuss. Kasi nga, either yung cost or yung object is contrary to law, morals, good customs, public policy, or, or public order, yun. So, void yun. And I don't think I need to discuss that. Kasi palagi na natin siyang na-discuss. Or, yeah. We have already discussed it balik-balik na previously and alam na alam nyo na yan. Second, etong absolutely simulated or fictitious. Actually, kahit pa paano na-discuss na rin naman natin siya. Pero when you say absolute simulation, di ba? Pag absolute simulation, the contract is void for lack of consent kasi simulated nga. Then, if relative simulation kung saan yung nakahidden or yung intended yung intent ng parties is ano hindi di ba relative lang yung simulation pag iba yung intent talaga ng parties dun sa nangi, nasa kontrata nila then pag ganyan yung binding is kung ano talaga yung real agreements ng parties so yan kaya nasama sa enumeration yung simulated contracts kung baga, wala talaga silang plano, walang agreement, walang intention to be bound. Fictitious nga or absolutely simulated. Yung third na sa enumeration is yung nasa paragraph 3, it speaks about yung contracts wherein yung cost or yung object does not exist at the time of the transaction. So, Siguro example dito is yung sale ng future inheritance kasi hindi mo man naman talaga mabebenta yon dahil wala pa nga, di ba? And then uh, ano pa ba? Fourth, sabi yung outside the commerce of men. Parang kalatang halata na rin na discuss na natin siya before, pabalik na lang din ng discussion. Fifth, uh, pag impossible service. Well, yeah, same with number 6 and number 7, very self-explanatory. Masayin nyo na lang, may hiintindihan nyo na siya. So, ano pa ba? Let's proceed with Article 14.10. The action or defense for the declaration of the inexistence of a contract does not prescribe. So, yun na nga. If a contract is void, 
yung party ng kontrata na yun can always bring a court action to declare it void or inexistent kasi yung void contract ay hindi nag-pre-prescribe unlike kay receivable and voidable contracts na nag-pre-prescribe. Okay, so it provides for a rule kung saan yung contract is illegal and the act constitutes criminal offense. So, eto. Where both parties are in pari delecto, ang magiging epekto is, number one, the parties shall have no action against each other. And second, both shall be prosecuted. Tapos, yung price ng contract as well as yung effects or instruments ng crime, yan ay mako-confiscate in favor of the government. Yun yung sabi ni Article 48 actually ng NASA Revised Penal Code. Uh, pag yung mga yeah, instruments na hinamit sa crime, mako-confiscate naman talaga yan in favor of the government. So that is the effect if yung uh, paridilekto yung dalawang parties. Meaning pareho silang dalawa. Pareho silang guilty. Na, okay. Anyway, let's proceed with the other scenario. Pag yung only one party is guilty. So, meaning, one party is guilty and the other is innocent. Hindi sila, hindi both parties are equally guilty. Hindi sila pari dilecto or in pari dilecto. So, in that case, yung innocent party actually, or yung sino man yung less guilty may claim, what he has given. Okay? Pwede niyang maklaim kung ano man yung binigay niya and he will not be bound to comply with his promise. Okay? Yun yung nasa second paragraph. Diba? When only one of the party is guilty but the innocent one may claim what he has given. Okay? And hindi siya mababound to comply with his promise. So, let's take an example. Eto. Halimbawa, if si Pogi nagbenta siya ng, sabihin na natin, shabu kay ganda, worth, say, 1 million pesos. Now, etong si ganda, nagbayad lang ng 100,000 pesos. And so, etong si Pogi, hindi niya diniliver ang lahat ng yun, illegal drugs na napagkasunduan nila ni ganda. So, in this case, wala kay Pogi or kay Ganda has the right of action against each other. The law will leave them where it finds them. Kumbaga, wala. Pabawayaan lang sila kasi pareho sila in pari dilecto. Okay? But silang dalawa, both shall be prosecuted and yung price and yung illegal drugs na is confiscate in favor of the government. Okay? Now, halimbawa naman, ganito ang nangyari. Well, same example as eto, yung kanina. Pero, yeah, edit lang natin ng konti. Halimbawa, if si Pogi is selling ganda a drugs. Etong si ganda, hindi niya alam na that is an illegal drug. So, bumili din siya. Yun pa rin yung price, 1 million pesos yung benta, binili ni Ganda, binayaran lang ni Ganda ng 100,000 pesos lang muna. So, dahil si Ganda is um, innocent party, then she can claim the return of the 100,000 pesos. Or if hindi pa talaga siya nakakapagbayad, then si Ganda can, cannot be compelled to pay, okay? Hindi siya makokompel ni Pogi to comply with his promise to pay 1 million pesos or kahit anong amount pa man yan. Okay? The law will render relief to the more innocent party. So, si Pogi for selling an illegal drugs, siya yung mapoprosecute, tapos criminally, tapos yung article, yung illegal drugs will be prosecuted I mean, will be confiscated in favor of the government. So, that's it. That's Article 1411. Let's proceed with Article 1412. If the act in which the unlawful or forbidden cause consists does not constitute a criminal offense, the following rules shall be observed. Number one, 
When the fault is on the part of both contracting parties, neither may recover what he has given by virtue of the contract or demand the performance of the other undertaking. Number two, when only one of the contracting parties is at fault, he cannot recover what he has given by reason of the contract or ask for the fulfillment of what has been promised him. The other who is not at fault may demand the return of what he has given without any obligation to comply with his promise. So, ito naman is yung rules where the contract is void pa rin, legal, but it does not constitute criminal offense. So, ang mangyayari pag both parties are in pari delecto, okay, both are guilty, then... There is, but then, kasi nga, wala namang criminal offense. So, ang mangyayari is that neither one lang sa kanila, wala sa kanila ang makaka-recover kung anuman ang binigay nila by, by virtue of the contract. And wala rin sa kanila ang pwedeng mag-demand for the performance ng bawat isang undertaking, okay, na nasa agreement nila. Okay, so yun yung rule if both are guilty or yung both parties are in pari, pari delecto. Now, paano naman if only one is guilty or at fault? So, yung magiging effect is, or effects are, first, yung guilty party cannot recover what he has given by reason of the contract, diba? Or, hindi rin siya pwedeng mag-ask for the fulfillment of what had been promised him. Yun yung sabi ni Article 14, 12. Doon naman kay party who is not at fault, siya ay pwedeng mag-demand ng return of what he has given without any obligation to comply with his promise. Okay? So, yun na rin ata. Let's proceed with Article 14.14. When money is paid or property delivered for an illegal purpose, the contract may be repudiated by one of the parties before the purpose has been accomp accomplished or before any damage has been caused to a third person. In such case, the courts may, if the public interest will thus be subserved, allow the party repudiating the contract to recover the money or property. So, this is actually an exception dun sa rule na kung saan uh, di ba hindi in pari delecto hindi ka na dapat makaka-recover walang recovery dapat pero under article 1414 it provides for a case where recovery can be made even if the parties are in pari delecto okay however yung recovery it can only be done first dapat if the purpose has not yet been accomplished. And second, damage has not been caused to third person. So, example, for 10,000 pesos, Pogi promised to kill Ganda for beauty, okay? Babayaran ni beauty si Pogi ng 10,000 pesos para patayin si Ganda. Now, si beauty gave the reward in advance. Binayaran niya na si Pogi. So, before Pogi could kill Ganda, nag-withdraw si Beauty sa kanyang plano. Parang ayaw niya na, okay? Hindi niya kaya. So, nag-withdraw siya sa plano, sa evil plan ni Beauty. Question, is Beauty allowed to do so? Of course, because the act has not yet been accomplished. And second, no damage was caused to third person pa, di ba? Now, question number two. May beauty recover what he has paid? So, the answer here is, it is discretionary on the part of the court. Tapos, third. Supposing the repudiation took place after the act of killing. Tapos na, napatay na ni Foggy si Ganda, tsaka pa nag-repudiate, tsaka pa nag-withdraw si beauty. So, ano na ang mangyayari? So, ang mangyayari is that both parties, Beauty and Poggy, will be prosecuted for the crime of killing Ganda. So, malamang murder. So, that's it. That's a good example 
Now let's proceed with Article 1415, where one of the parties to an illegal contract is incapable of giving consent. The courts may, if the interest of justice so demands, allow recovery of money or property delivered by the incapacitated person. So again, ito is another instance kung kailan pwede inaallow ng batas yung recovery. Diba? First, yung kanina, yung Article 14.14. So, eto rin. It is another instance, another exception dun sa hindi pwedeng makarecover. Yan, sinasabi ni Article 14.15 na if one party is incapacitated, pwede rin makarecover. So, example ganito. Yung sa example natin kanina pa rin, si Paul G. pinayaran ni Beauty ng 10,000 pesos to kill ganda. Supposedly, if etong si Beauty pala is minor, 10 years old pa lang siya. Okay? Then, bago pa man mapatay ni Pogi si Ganda, nag na si Beauty. Ayaw niya na. Ayaw niya nang ituloy yung plano nila. So, question. If yung reward was already given to Pogi, di ba? Sa, sa question rin naman natin kanina na bigay na, pwede bang mabawi ni Beauty ang kanyang binigay kang Pogi na 10,000 pesos? The answer is yes, because again, this is another instance wherein yung guilty party is allowed recovery. That is, if he is a minor or a, a person who is incapacitated, e dito 10 years old pa lang naman si beauty. Then, question number two. Pag yung act was already consummated, pwede pa bang makuha ni beauty? The answer is no more. At dahil nga napatay na ni Pogi si Ganda, then Pogi will be prosecuted for killing Ganda. And since si Beauty is a minor, he is, she is actually, she is exempted from criminal liability. Okay? So, let's proceed with Article 1416. When the agreement is not illegal per se, but is merely prohibited, and the prohibition by the law is designed for the protection of the plaintiff, he may, if public policy is thereby enhanced, recover what he has paid or delivered. So, Article 14.16 is, again, another exception to the rule wherein both parties are in pari delecto. They will be left where they are without any relief. The ban that is, sabi nga, recovery is not allowed pag ganun. Pero dito kay Article 1416, recovery is allowed or is permitted, provided. Number one, the agreement is not illegal per se. But, dapat is merely prohibited lang siya, okay? So, it is not illegal per se but is merely prohibited. Second, the prohibition is designed for the protection of the plaintiff. And third, public policy would be enhanced by allowing the plaintiff to recover what he has delivered. So, yun. Yun lang yung Article 1416. And I don't think it is an important provision. So, anyway, let's proceed with Article 1417. Oh, wait. Let's take an example muna kay Article 1416. Halimbawa, yun sa example na, Si Pogi, dinonate niya ang lahat-lahat ng kanyang property, everything that uh, kanya, dinonate niya kay Ganda. And so, nothing was left for Pogi, for his sustenance, di ba? Wala na, kasi dinonate, binigay niya lahat kay Ganda. Now, this is prohibited by law. Pero, hindi siya illegal per se. So, since public policy is enhance, Pogi will be allowed to recover at least yung necessary lang for his own support and of course dun naman sa kanyang pamilya. So, pwede siyang makarecover kasi hindi naman illegal per se but merely prohibited by law. So, that's it. That's Article 1416. Now, let's proceed with Article 1417. When the price of any article or commodity is determined by statute, or by authority of law, any person paying any amount in excess of the maximum price allowed may recover such excess. So, eto naman, in case of 
payment in exist dun sa maximum price. So, kumbaga, yung batas, yung price ng article na yan or ng commodity na yan ay dinetermine na ng batas na eto yung maximum price. Tapos, ikaw, nagbayad ka in exist of that maximum price. So, recovery is allowed. So, if halimbawa, well, halimbawa lang. If example, yung meron tayong batas na nagsasabi na yung price ng alcohol uh, or siguro sabihin na nating face mask, dapat daw 100 pesos maximum na yung box. Tapos, ikaw, bumili ka ng box ng mask. Tapos, at an amount of 150 pesos. So, pwede mong ma-recover yung excess na 50 pesos. Yun, yun, yung, yun lang yung ibig sabihin ni Article 1417. So, let's proceed with Article 1418. When the law fixes or authorizes the fixing of the maximum number of hours of labor, and a contract is entered into whereby a laborer undertakes to work longer than the maximum thus fixed, he may demand additional compensation for service rendered beyond the time limit. So, ito naman is about the hours of labor. So, kumbaga, yung, if yung batas nag-fix siya ng maximum number of hours of labor, labor and so, if yung workers nag-work siya ng longer than the maximum time na allowed, then dapat magbayad or mag-demand siya for additional ano, compensation for the service na nirender niya beyond the time limit. Actually, that's it. So, let's proceed with Article 1419. When the law sets or authorizes the setting of a minimum wage for laborers, and a contract is agreed upon by which a laborer accepts a lower wage, he shall be entitled to recover the deficiency. So, ito naman sa minimum wage. So, bawal nga yung waiver of right dito eh. So, if ever, nag-set nga ng minimum wage, then, actually, hindi na if ever. La dapat naman talaga is, uh, yung contract or yung sahod is, hindi lower than the minimum wage. Otherwise, pwede mong ma-recover yung deficiency. Dapat within more than the minimum wage talaga yung sahod. Anyway, that's it. Huwag na tayong mag-dwell masyado sa kanya. So, Article 1420. In case of a divisible contract, if the illegal terms can be separated from the legal ones, the latter may be enforced. So, eto, pag yung sa terms ng mga contracts, merong illegal terms. And so, if pwede namang mahiwalay yung legal terms from that illegal terms, din tatanggalin lang yung illegal terms para maging enforceable pa rin yung legal terms. Unless it is indivisible talaga so that yung whole contract is void. Okay? Kahit na some of the terms are illegal pero kasi nga indivisible talaga siya, then the whole contract will become void. Pero if divisible naman yung contract, then yun nga, yung mga illegal terms lang ay separate from the legal one. Okay? Dahil yung mga legal terms, magiging enforceable pa rin siya. That's it. Now, Article 1421. The defense of illegality of contracts is not available to third persons whose interests are not directly affected. Well, yung defense ng illegality are generally hindi talaga yan available to third persons, okay? Even if yung contract is illegal, the defense of illegality ng contract na yan ay pwede lang iset up ng mga tao whose interest are directly affected, okay? So, Article 1422, in last provision, a contract which is the direct result of a previous legal contract is also void and inexistent, okay? So, yung mga contract na direct result daw ng mga previously illegal contract rin ay magiging void and inexistent rin, okay? So, example, if Pogi promised to Ganda a 10,000 pesos if Ganda will kill beauty. Okay, baliktad naman. 
So later, after killing, the contract was changed to halimbawa hindi na bibigyan ng 10,000 pesos but uh, bibigyan na lang ng house and lot. So the second contract is a direct result pa rin ng illegal contract which is to kill duty. And so yung second contract is also null and void. Yun, yun lang yung ibig sabihin niya. And that is Article 1422. That is exactly, yun na, yun na yung defective contracts. Tapos na tayo kay receivable, voidable, and enforceable, and void contracts. So, thank you for watching until this point in time. Salamat ng marami. Alam ko marami hindi na makakapanood nito kasi tapos na yung final exam. This video is a little bit late talaga kasi nga din, Medyo busy rin yung schedule. But then, give me this time to say thank you for watching this series. Okay? Salamat sa mga nag-message. Kasi nakaka-inspire, nakakataba ng puso. And then, gusto ko talagang sabihin sa inyo na uh, thank you and thank you and thank you. I did not expect na in a matter of... Kasi first upload ko was I think August. August so, September, October, November, December, four months, tayo ay lulobo into 3,000 subscribers. Tapos, marami na rin tayong watch hours so, and watch, I mean, views. And so, yan, nakakataba ng puso na tinangkilik yung lectures. Especially nga talaga is itong lectures. And then, masarap din isipin na nakatulong kasi marami talagang nagme-message privately to thank me. And that was very much appreciated. Sa mga nag-like, nag-subscribe, nag-comment, yes, thank you. And then, siguro kasi tapos na rin yung series, sana wag nyo na lang din akong i-unsubscribe. Now, kung wala na kayong kailangan, paki ano na lang, siguro yung notification bell. Kasi, syempre, gusto ko rin namang mas lumaki yung population. Siguro, uh, in a matter of ilang years, gusto ko rin maabot yung ano, silver play ng YouTube. Okay? So, sana ibigay nyo rin sa akin siya. So, gift nyo na lang, Christmas gift nyo na lang yung pag-subscribe nyo dito. Huwag kayong mag-unsubscribe. Thank you, and once again, good luck and God bless in your studies. So, that's it.